diapers Not the kid hold us down Get this defeated Jesus you've overcome we thank you so much that you are so good God that you are great and that we get this opportunity to come together as a church and as a community to lift you up so God we just want to do that this morning we want to lift you up in every single thing that we do and we want to start right now by continuing to lift you up we love you, Lord. Amen. You give life. You are love. You bring. You give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. You give
Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much, Lord, that you are such a good God. In fact, you're not just good, you are great. So, Father, this morning, we just want to pour out our praise to you with everything that's in us. We want to lift up your name. We want to bring you honor and glory and praise in everything that we say and in everything that we do. Just with the confidence and the boldness, knowing that no matter what we're up against, no matter what we're facing, that you are so much bigger, that you are so much greater. And we have our hope and our confidence, and we place it solely in you this morning. So have your way in this place. Have your way in us, Lord. Let us know, speak to us that it is okay that, that, that we are here, that we are to enjoy you, enjoy your presence, that, that you want to let us step into that joy this morning. You want us to have fun. So we love you, Lord. We give you this time in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen? Amen, amen. amen. Well, you guys can grab a seat this morning. Oh, good morning. Wow, this is our fun service. That was awful. Good morning. Good morning. Much better. Well, good morning. My name's Tony. I'm the youth pastor here at The Well. I'm excited to be here this morning uh, in our annual fun service. Uh, you could look up and look around, and you could see that we probably have some cool stuff that's going to happen this morning. Uh, we're, we're excited about it. If you're a guest, we are excited that you're here this morning. If you have any questions at all, uh, please don't hesitate to find someone wearing a blue name tag. They're here stationed throughout the campus to answer any questions you might have to point you in the right direction. If you are a guest, I want to invite you in the seat back in front of you. There's a, a, a little card. It says new here on one side. Uh, if you could just give, take a moment and give us your name and email address. Take it back to guest services following the service. We got a gift for you. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, we'll just say thank you for coming. Um, but hopefully you guys have already gotten the sense that, that we love to worship. Um, what about that band this morning, huh? Man, we are, we are so blessed to, to get to experience worship like that, and they, their team does a great job. And, and so we love to worship the Lord through singing and through music. We, we love to get into, into the Word and the God's Word and the preaching and the teaching and the hearing of God's Word. And so Pastor Jerry's got a great message for us this morning. So grab a pen, a paper, a notepad, a journal, lean in. It's going to be a great time. But we also love to worship in our giving and in our generosity. So if you've come prepared to do that this morning, uh, there's an envelope in the seat back in front of you. It'll give you all the instructions on how to do that. If you want to give cash, use the envelope. Other ways, there's instructions on how to give online. But each week as we come together, and we come together with our generosity, we like to let you guys know amazing organizations and ministries that, that we get to partner with locally, nationally, globally. Uh, we, we have some amazing ministry partners. But today, I'm really excited because we get to really talk about something that we do right here at the well, and that's Kids Club. If you're not familiar with Kids Club, it's a national organization. Typically, they go into schools and do an after-school program, have fun, engage children, show them the light and the love of Jesus in a, in a practical way that they can understand. But we actually have a chapter here at the well that we... we, we um, a team of people that go over to Batavia Apartments and have a kids club over there. And uh, it's just been an awesome opportunity for us to love the, the children over at Batavia Apartments. We do a back to, uh, back to school outreach. You saw a video about that a couple weeks ago. And lives are being impacted and changed through uh, what we're doing over there, what God is doing through us over there. And so uh, Shannon, our children's pastor, she asked me to tell you guys what we can be praying for. And we want to be a people of prayer. And so I want to let you guys know that she's asking us to pray for the kids and the families over at Batavia Apartments that God would begin to stir them up so that when they launch into Kids Club this year, that we would just see kids show up and, and, and be exposed to the gospel so that their lives could change, their family trees could change. I mean, it's a big deal uh, what God wants to do in that place, and he's asked us to play, pay, play a part in that. So we're going to pray for those kids. She also asked that we would pray for leaders, people who are excited about kids that are excited about uh, people over at the Batavia Apartments to step up and help her as they uh, head into there. There's a dream that's been placed on her heart to reach those kids. And so if you'd like to be part of that dream, uh, head back to Well Connected, uh, get in touch with Shannon. She'd tell you how you could get involved with that. So we're really excited about what's going to happen this year at Kids Club. But uh, So what we want to do is we just want to Go to the Lord and pray for that this morning and pray for the gifts that are given. So pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much uh, just for the opportunity that we have to give. 
And so, Father, we just ask that the gifts that are given this morning, that you would bless them, that you would use them to advance your kingdom, Father, that, that they would be uh, pleasant to you, Lord, that, that they would be honoring to you, that you would, you, we would be able to worship you in a way that gives you praise through our giving. And, Lord, we just pray this morning for Kids Club. Lord, nationally, that, that children around the country would experience your light and your love through that program. But, Lord, we want to lift up the team from here at the well, Lord. We want to lift them up to you and pray for their leadership. Father, that you would bring more leaders into the fold so that more children can experience you through the work of Kids Club. Father, we pray for the families over at Batavia Apartments and for the children, Lord, that you would begin uh, to do a work on their heart that would make them open to coming and just being a part of this ultimately so they could experience you and enter into a life-changing, eternity-changing relationship with you. So we thank you for this opportunity. We ask that you bless this ministry, Shannon and her team and those families, in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen? Amen. 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 morning. How's everyone doing? Good? Good, good. Uh, for those of you I haven't met yet, my name is Jerry. I'm the lead pastor here at The Well. We're so excited that you guys are here. Today is a very, very special day in the, uh, in the calendar, in the life of The Well. Um, every year we do, uh, around this time of year, we do a series where we look at the things that are our most foundational, our most fundamental to who we are as a people. We, we do a, a teaching series on our core values. And our last core value, our fifth core value, is have fun. And this is something we take very, very, very seriously. And so every year around this time, we have a service that is just dedicated to the idea of us learning to live out this principle of having fun and why that is so fundamentally important to our faith, to our life, to our relationships, to our health. And so, um, so when we think about the, the, the life of Jesus, when we think about the nature of Jesus, one of the things we see is that everywhere he went, everywhere he was, he was a life giver. So he would go into a dark situation and it would be filled with light. He would go into a bleak situation and it would be filled with hope. He'd go into a sad situation and it would immediately be filled with laughter. So over and over and over, Jesus had this capacity that he was a life giver. He gave peace. And the life that, that people experienced around him seemed to be this overarching, abundant, real kind of life. And so we're convinced, I'm convinced, that our life, our experience in, in our life with him, in our life of faith, should sort of resemble that, that, that we should take on the nature, the character, the characteristics that we see in the life of Jesus. Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 10, he said, the thief's purpose, the reason that a thief comes, is to steal and to kill and to destroy. But my purpose, the reason that I exist, the reason that I have come, is to give them rich and satisfying life. Everyone say, rich and satisfying life. Now let me just ask you a question. How many of you would describe your life as rich and satisfying? How many of you, if, if someone asked yesterday or, or, or the day before, hey, how was your summer? You were like, oh, it was rich. It was satisfying. It was fantastic. It was exquisite. How many of you would really say, though, that your life is sort of marked by this sense of joy, a sense of hope? It's marked by the sounds of song and laughter and, and sort of a rhythm that is, is, is like a dance, and all too often, our lives don't sort of express that. And when they don't express it, when we don't experience it, then what we, what, what's true for us then is, for some reason, our life is not moving in the rhythm of God. 
And so our hope as we sort of wrap up our core values is that we would learn to move in that full rhythm of God and experience his joy, this real and satisfying life that is overarching. So, so, so in order for us to do that, our life needs to exhibit what we see in the life of Christ. So I, I've narrowed it down to five things that I think if we could focus on these things, it would make life truly fun. It would make our faith truly fun. So, so here's the first one. Faith is fun when it is authentic. Faith is fun when it is authentic. One of the things um, that, that I know is that Christians are constantly accused of being fake. Now, I didn't grow up in the church, and so I had kind of heard that my whole life, that Christians were fake, and I was, you know, I, I kind of believed it, and I had experienced a little bit of that myself. And, and so when I first came to church, I really didn't know what to expect about what was going on. And so to help us sort of understand how we are sometimes perceived by those people out in the world, we have actually captured a video of some of the crazy things that we say when we're together. So, so here you go. Bless his heart. I think he's backsliding. I think I saw him drink. Yeah, but in moderation. I just wasn't seeing much fruit. Yeah, he's going down a slippery slope. How's your heart, man? How's your heart? I'm just such a words guy. It was a total God thing. I'm blessed. I've been working on my testimony. Is that secular music? We're opening with a secular song tonight. Wait, is this a secular song? Isn't she secular? Which station is The Fish? 104.3 The Fish. Safe for the whole family. You know he's a believer. I think he's saved. I just pray you'd give him traveling mercies. Mm. Pray for all Tyler's unspokens. Mm. Echo that. I just really like to echo Tyler's prayer, Father. I just, I echo that echo of my echo of his echo. I really feel like I'm being released from this, you know? I'm trying to be relevant. I'm just trying to be in the world, not of it. Hey, do you want to join our small group? You want to join my D group? You want to join my cell group? Community group? Access group? Accountability group? Acts 27 group? Dude, he brought it. He brought the word. That service last night rocked me. They're pretty purpose driven. Yeah, it's seeker. Don't they do seeker service there? I feel like he's gotten really watered down. I don't feel like he really teaches the word. There's just not enough meat, you know? Are they non denom We have a great Wednesday night supper. Let's invite some dudes over and fellowship tonight. We're gonna have a sweet time of fellowshipping tonight. Dude, we had the sickest fellowship last night. We're going to extreme. Velocity. Ignite. Yeah, I'm going to ignite. The edge. The dive. The bridge. The ramp. Fire. Courageous. Passion. Echo. Reverb. Noise. Velocity. Drive. Elevate. Radiate. 722. 635. 419. Orange. Blue. Yellow. Green. Clear. Neon. Catalyst conference this year. I don't do that because I feel like it ruins my witness. I've been struggling with that. So I'm really wrestling with that. I'm wrestling with a doubt. I need someone to hold me accountable. I'm really trying to be intentional with her. I'm pursuing her for sure. I'm trying to guard her heart. Guard her heart though, bro. Will you hold me accountable to that? Yeah, well, bounce your ass. Bounce your ass. Dang it. Crap. Shoot. Sheesh. Frip. Darn it. What the H? Holy crap. Son of a beasting. Dude, he's really teeing me off. I'm going to kick his A. Are you asking me right now? Not cool. I, I find that offensive. So that's what we sound like. You know, as, as much as I was afraid of the idea of being in a, in a community of hypocrites, the one thing that actually caused me more fear was that what if they weren't faking it? What if all of that was real? And the expectation that was being put on me was that all of a sudden I had to be perfect. And here's the truth, whether you realize it or not, I am a wreck. Now, now here's the thing, don't judge me because you're a wreck too. Your kids are a wreck, your car is a wreck, your dog is a mess, your house is a mess, your yard isn't mowed, your spouse doesn't like you. Now, I know some of you are thinking, they never told me that. They confessed it to me. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. I talked to them. I told them I don't like you either. <laughs> and here's the worst part. Your mother doesn't like you. Not all the time. And here's why. All joking aside, because every one of us is broken and wounded and struggling in some very deep, important place. And every one of us tend to live out of that wounded, broken, painful place. And so then the idea of somehow living up to the height of our core convictions seems intimidating and impossible. And then when you throw the Christ life on top of that, it's insurmountable. And yet Jesus is so different 
oftentimes than the way we represent him, than the way he really was. The truth was Jesus got angry. He got angry with the, with the Pharisees. He, um, he, he struggled with his disciples. He got frustrated with them. And, and, and he, he cried when he was at Lazarus's uh, tomb. He, he struggled with fear. He struggled with, with, with remorse. He struggled with grief. His, his closest friend was who, who actually turned him into the Roman authority. Jesus argued with his mother at a wedding. Teenagers, give it up for a God who argues with his mom. And yet in all of that, we know that Jesus was actually perfect, that he never sinned. But somehow, having walked in those same stressful, struggle-filled places of our life, he's given us permission to live there with all of our imperfections. And the grace to realize that we can be authentic, we can be real, we can be pushing towards excellence while sort of embracing the holy mess that we are today. That being authentic, being real means that we can't be fake. And we have to acknowledge the fact that we'll never be perfect. If we could ever just be real, real with ourselves, real with one another, real with the Lord, I think life would be more fun. I think faith would be more fun. Faith, life, is fun when it's relevant. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, Paul was writing to the church, and he said this. He said, when I'm with those who are weak, I share their weakness because I want to bring the weak to Christ. Yeah, I try to find common ground with everyone, doing everything I can to save some. Now, Paul was saying, whatever I need to do to build a bridge between them and me so that we can basically start from the same point, I'm interested in doing that. And here's what, what happened to me. I remember when I first became a Christian, I immediately wanted my friends to experience what I, was, what I was experiencing. So I would start to talk to them about all the things in their life that were sort of disconnected. And I wanted them to, to try to see from my point of view. And, and one of the things that I did, one of the things that probably you've done at times, is that I would try to express to them my hope, my conviction, my ideas from the Bible. And there's nothing that's funnier to me than watching a Christian argue or debate a non-Christian using the Bible you realize they don't believe in the Bible. And so Paul just takes a totally different tact. He takes a totally different approach. Not that the Bible isn't relevant to our lives, but he was convinced that the Bible is so relevant to our lives, we don't have to quote it chapter and verse. And so Paul, in one particular time, walked into the pantheon of, of Greek and, and Roman gods, and he found one that on the statue said, the God who, who is unknown. In other words, they wanted to make sure that they worshipped everyone, so they even had a monument to the God they weren't sure about. And Paul said, you know what, I know this guy. Let me talk to you about him. He found that place where they could both stand together, and he began to demonstrate a faith that was applied to his life, that made sense in the marketplace, that made sense in his home, that made sense in every area of his life. And until our faith begins to populate all of the areas of our life, not just our belief about the Bible and Jesus, it'll stay detached, irrelevant from our lives. Our faith has to pass the who cares test. It has to pass the how does that help me on Monday test. So when our faith affects who we are in our community, when our faith affects who we are in our workplace, when our faith affects who we are in the middle of traffic, all of a sudden it becomes relevant, all of a sudden it becomes important, all of a sudden it becomes tangible. And when our faith becomes relevant, when our faith becomes tangible, when our faith becomes important, our faith becomes fun. If my faith isn't making a difference on Tuesday and Wednesday, if my faith isn't making a difference in the life of people around me, then it isn't ever going to bring joy, peace, hope 
to my life or anyone else's. The third thing is our faith is going to be fun, our life is going to be fun when it's actually enjoyable. Our faith will be fun when it's fun. Everyone say faith is fun when it's fun. I know that seems basic, but some of you guys, you, you spend your whole life looking like you've just sucked lemon, man, like just sour. You're sour on your way to work, sour on your way home, sour in the grocery store. And yet the psalmist said, or the, the Proverbs say this in Proverbs 17, It says, a cheerful heart is a good medicine. When we've got joy, when we're excited, when we're happy, when we're having fun, when we're laughing, it's like medicine to our bodies. But a broken spirit, it saps a person's strength. Psalms 122 verse 1 says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I remember when I was a kid, if my mom even mentioned the idea of going to church, I could contract a flu in about seven seconds, man. I would shove anything down my throat. <laughs> you know, anything you could do to get out of that. And yet scripture says that this should be the place that we're the most excited to be. And this group of people should be the people that we can't wait to be among. There's a story in the Old Testament. The people of Israel had, had entered into the promised land. They had experienced the blessing, the favor, the promise of God. And then it had been snatched away. They had lived in the promise, and then they had lost it. And they were taken into captivity, and after a long time, they eventually came back. But when they came back, they came back as a broken people to a broken land with broken cities. And eventually, a man, a governor, a ruler came into Jerusalem, an, a man named Nehemiah. And he began to rebuild the walls around the city of Jerusalem as a sign that they still had hope, that they still had a future, that God had a plan for their life to begin to rekindle something in their spirits. And in Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10, just as they were completing the wall, this is what Nehemiah commanded them to do. He said, go and celebrate with a feast of rich food and sweet drink. Share gifts of food with, with each other, with other people, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And over and over, anytime God wanted the people to experience happiness, joy, he would send them to celebrate. He would say, listen, you guys need to throw a party. There should be music and dancing and singing and laughing. There should be great food and great drink with great friends. And you should be sharing everything you have with everyone around you. That's sort of the, the secret sauce in our joy. That, that we would have good food, good friends, good fun, and that we would be willing to share and be generous towards other people. There is nothing that will put more joy in your heart than beginning to place joy in other people's hearts. If you've never done this, try this sometime. The next time you're out to eat and you're with a server and you find out that they're struggling or a single mom or a single dad or a kid trying to work their way through school and their car is busted, do this. Figure out whatever the total of your check is going to be and leave a tip that's two times the size of the entire ticket. And then just hide somewhere and watch when they get that thing. And the joy that they experienced and that sense that someone loved them, that someone heard them, that someone saw them in their struggle. I promise you, you will live for the next three weeks on that single moment. There's something magic about giving the gift of joy to other people about being generous. L let me just show you. Let's demonstrate that right now. Let's give everybody something. We have something for you guys, don't we? All right, let's give those to them. Everybody have one? 
So, so here's the thing. These, they're just little stress balls that we wanted to give you. So the next time that you're feeling stressed or the next time you're thinking about getting that sour look on your face instead of a happy look on your face, you can just kind of grab this and give it a squeeze. Don't, don't squeeze it and be thinking about throwing it at me like the worship team because none of them are going to heaven. Um, so, yeah, it's okay. We won't miss them. Um, so, no, I, I'm kidding. We'll miss some of them. Okay, so, so, so this is just a little stress ball. But here's what I want you to see. Here's what I want you to understand. God, God's attitude towards you is so much different than you think it is. Years and years and years ago, God was speaking to one of the ancient prophets, a man named Zephaniah, and this is what he told him. He said, when I think about you, when I think about my people, my children, I celebrate by dancing and singing and spinning over them. Every time God thinks about you, you put a smile on the face of God. And right now, God is standing and singing and laughing and dancing over you because you bring him joy. And he says, listen, this joy that I feel for you is the thing that's going to give you strength. It's the thing that's going to set you free. It's the medicine that you need for your soul. So our lives in Jesus, our lives with one another cannot be dull and boring and sour. They're supposed to be passionate and exciting and goofy. We should be willing to take risks. Because if faith can't be enjoyable, if it isn't going to be fun, no one's going to want to join us. Faith is fun. Life is fun when it's accepting. There's a a story in the Gospel of Mark where Jesus was out speaking publicly and there were groups of people that were sort of pushed out to the periphery, to the margins of the culture. And Jesus saw one of those people, a man named Levi, who was in a tax collecting booth on the side of the road. And he called Levi in. He called that person who had been relegated to the margins of culture, from the edges of life to the very center of the story. And just that simple act of love, just that building a bridge and saying, listen, I want you to be here, changed Levi's heart. He said, listen, from this point on, I'm gonna be a follower of Jesus, I'm gonna be a totally different man. Just that simple act of love changed him completely. In in Mark chapter two, verse 15, it says later, Levi threw a party, of course he threw a party, And he invited Jesus and his disciples to his home uh, as dinner guests, along with many of his tax collectors and his other disreputable sinner friends. And there were many of this kind of people among Jesus' followers. But when the teachers of the religious law, who were Pharisees, saw him eating with tax collectors and other sinners, they asked his disciples, why does he eat with such scum? When Jesus heard this, he told them, healthy people don't need a doctor, sick people do. I have come to call those who, not who think they are righteous, but those who who know that they are sinners. There's another story where Jesus was speaking publicly, and right in the middle of his time, this mob comes in, and they throw a woman barely dressed at Jesus' feet. They said, Jesus, we caught this woman in the very act of adultery. We caught her in the very act of sin. And our our scripture, our laws, our text teaches that we are supposed to stone this person. So what do you say? What are you going to do with our law, our code, our text as it regards to this woman? Jesus stooped down by the woman and began to write something in the sand. And then he stood up and he said, I'll tell you what, whoever among you is absolutely perfect as it relates to our law, our code, our text, then you throw the first stone and all the rest of us are gonna join in. He bent down on the sand and he began to write again. And the scripture teaches that the crowd began to thin out, first the oldest, because they're usually the smartest among us. And then eventually everyone else started to slip away. And eventually Jesus and the woman stood up. 
John chapter 8, verse 10 recounts what happened next. Jesus stood up again and it said to the woman, where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? No, Lord, she said. Jesus said, neither do I. Now go and sin no more. The reason I love these stories is it's so obvious that Jesus wasn't interested in changing them before they came in. He was just interested in loving them. He just reaches out. He just builds a bridge. He just kicks open a door so that Levi can come in. He actually stands in between the woman and those people who would seek to judge her to do her harm. He stood in the breach. He stood in the gap between those who would judge and who they would judge. He just loved them. He just accepted them. And if our life is ever going to be fun, if it's ever going to be marked by peace and joy, we have to stop drawing lines that divide us from them, whoever us and them are, because they hold a different political persuasion, because they take a different approach to to social sciences, because they, they come from a different area of the globe or ethnicity, or because their religion is different than ours. Notice that Jesus starts with just loving them, just building a bridge for them, protecting them from being judged. And then he earned the right to say something important to their heart. And Levi, we know from the Bible account, was changed. He was radically transformed. If we're going to to have fun, if life is gonna be important, if it's gonna be meaningful, if it's gonna be marked by something that is deeply satisfying and abundant, it cannot be marked by judgment. It has to be a life that is lived with our hands, our arms, our hearts wide open. Because ultimately our lives if they're gonna be fun, our faith, if it's gonna be fun. It has to be powerful. In Mark chapter six, Jesus has just crossed over the the Sea of Galilee again and he kinda went back and forth a lot. And as he stepped off the boat and into the village, it just sort of gives us this little synopsis that every time Jesus would move from one area to another and he would begin to enter villages, the same thing would happen over and over and over again. People would would come out of their homes and into the streets. People from the surrounding communities would flood into those cities and they would bring with them everyone who was hurting, everyone who was sick, everyone who was broken, all in an attempt to just touch Jesus at some level because they were convinced if they could just touch Jesus, they would be healed, they would be transformed. Sometimes when the crowds were too thick, they would literally line the street with the sick, hoping that just Jesus' shadow passing over them could ignite and spark life in their souls, in their spirits, in their bodies, fresh and new. And Jesus said, when he was talking to his followers in John chapter 14, he said, I tell you the truth, anyone who has entered into a life-giving, life-changing relationship with me, anyone who really knows me, all the things that you have seen me do, all the things that you've heard about me doing, you're going to be able to do those things. And you're actually going to do even more of them because there is more of you. And because I go to be with the Father, you can actually pray for anything in my name. And I'll give it to you. So that nothing will ever be impossible for you. Nothing is impossible for you. So believe for the impossible. Believe to have lives that are marked by authenticity, faith that is relevant down to the every smallest detail of our life. Lives, families, 
that are marked with joy and singing and dancing and laughter. Communities that instead of burning bridges and judging people, builds bridges and loves people. Because that's what's gonna make our life, our faith, our community powerful. Grab the, the globe I, I gave you. These little squeeze balls, if you look at them really close, they are the worst representation of a globe that's ever been created. But it's such a fitting metaphor. You hold the world in your hands and you have the power to do the impossible. So what will you do with it? Jesus said a thief comes and steals, he kills, he destroys. But God, the God life was given to us that we could be life givers, life receivers. In Romans chapter two, verse four, it said, don't you see how wonderfully kind how tolerant and patient God is with us. Does this mean nothing to you? Can't you see that it's the kindness of God? It's the goodness of God. It's the love of God. It's the song of God, the laughter of God that is intended to draw us away from ourselves, away from our sin, away from our brokenness and into him. You have the power to change, to be agents of change in our world. Jesus said, I have marked you with my image and I have sealed you with my spirit. Therefore go go into the city, go into your neighborhood, go into your workplace, and share the love of Jesus with them. Baptize them, welcome them into our community to be with us, for us to be with them. Teach them all that you have seen and learned of me, and know that I'm with you, and never leave you, And that every time I think of you, I smile and I dance and I sing. I want my life to be fun. I want my life to make a difference. I want my life to be powerful. Would you stand with me? The team is coming to to lead us in a song. This, this element in our service is our encounter worship because it's your chance to just connect with Jesus and his Holy Spirit for yourself. So we've created some touch points in this time. If you'd like to receive prayer, we have a couple families who will come up here in front. If you wanna sing, you can sing. If you wanna sit and meditate or think or pray, you can do that. But whatever else you do, would you take a moment and just ask yourself the question, is my life Is it satisfying? Is it real? Is it whole? Is it abundant? Is my life marked by joy and laughter? Or is it something else? As we do, we have folks who are coming by to distribute the elements of communion. We invite you just to hold on to those. We'll actually take those together after this song. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we just thank you so much for your life that was given for us so freely so that we could experience life completely. So God, don't let us sell ourselves short. Help us find the joy in this day to live in the midst of every moment, to be real, to be free, to be honest, to allow our faith to work its way into every area of our life. 
to take risks, to sing songs, to sing loud, to be passionate, passionate about people, all people, until they come to know the same grace, the same love, the same light that I have experienced in Jesus Christ. To experience your power and your peace. In Jesus' name.
said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And there's no way to get to those things except through me. So I'm going to ask everyone just to close their eyes and bow their heads for just a moment. If you're here and you realize my life is not marked by joy or passion or relevance or power, the truth is that as much as I believe in Jesus, I've never entered into the kind of relationship with him that has fundamentally changed my life, but I want to. If that's you today, would you let me know? Would you put your hand up? You could put it up and right back down. Thank you. I just want to experience life and joy and peace in Christ. Would you just make this your prayer this morning? Lord Jesus, I thank you that you came to give us life. And God, I am so sorry that I've spent so much time pursuing my own end by my own means for so long. And it has brought me nothing but sorrow and heartache. So Lord, today I just come and I exchange my grief for your joy my brokenness for your wholeness, my darkness for your light, my death for your life. So Lord Jesus, come into my heart, fill my mind, fill my relationships, my home, my workplace. Sit on the throne of my life. Be my Lord, my God, and my King. Take shape in me, Lord Jesus. It's in your precious name I pray. Everyone said amen. Amen. Jesus said as often as we do this, we're supposed to remember him. To remember who he was, to remember what he did, to remember his love, to remember what his life was supposed to mean for our life, that, that our life, that this life, it's supposed to be meaningful. It's supposed to be powerful. It's supposed to be marked by joy. To remember that 
As we enter into Christ, Christ enters into us. The most important thing that's being transformed is not the bread or the wine, but that we are transformed. So on the very night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it. He said, this is my body which is broken for you. Take this and remember me. Lord Jesus, we thank you for a life that was lived perfectly, that was authentic and relevant, filled, marked by joy, accepting and open to all and powerful. Now, Lord, we want to enter into your life as you enter into us. Reshape us and remake us to the very image and likeness of our God. In Jesus' name we pray. In the same way, at the end of the meal, he took the cup and he said, this is a new covenant. And this time it's poured out for you in my blood so that your sins can be completely forgiven, that you could be free, free to choose, free to do anything. Drink this and remember me. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you have taken up residence in us, that you are the life that burns at the core of who we are, that you are the beginner, the sustainer, and the finisher of our life and our faith. So Lord, let it be marked by your presence, by your character. Let us be sealed by your spirit. Let us know your power. Help us change the world. We bless you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said amen. Amen. All right, guys, we have one song left. We have one last opportunity to really practice what we've been talking about today. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to join God in his dancing and singing. Are you all ready? All right, here we go. Here we go. Truly 
living in a maze. His name is a maze. They're a real for greatness. Can't think of any other way to say this. Love is contagious. Make his name famous. This is true living in a maze. Thank you so much for coming. Two things really quick that you need to be aware of. Number one, uh, if you have uh, children's church age kids, they are here with us in the service. And so uh, you'll, ha you'll wanna check your kids out right here in service before you're dismissed. Also, this Friday is our back to school uh, first Friday youth service. Last night, Tony had like 80 kids at his house at a bonfire following the game. The youth group is just cranking on all cylinders. Your kids aren't gonna wanna miss it, so we encourage you to come out. If you would like to stay in this atmosphere of prayer and praise, you can do it right through that door on my left is our prayer room. There are prayer people who'd love to pray with you. If you have prayer needs, you can turn in one of our communication cards. It's a great way to let us know what's going on. If you're a guest with us, we invite you to fill out the back side of that and go back to Well Informed where our guest services are. We have a gift for you this morning. Before we do all that, would you just raise your hands and receive a blessing? Lord, bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Peace to know that God loves you, that he takes joy and pleasure in you, that he dances and sings over you. Peace to know that the joy of the Lord is your strength, that you have the power to move mountains, to take back your life and to live it wholly. Everyone said amen. Thanks so much for coming. We'll see you next week.